Hi, I'm Andrew Potochnik, and uh, I've spoken to you before about the Crown Cryogenic range, but um, this kit consists of five tools, which would be pretty much what you'd need as a beginner's kit. Obviously, they're, uh, they're the high-end ones, being the cryogenic range. The only thing that I would add to this kit of five would be a scraper. And um, a scraper of any particular size, it depends on what sort of projects you're going to uh, follow through on. But uh, just to add to the kit, that little scraper, and these will give you the full complement of what you need to do your basic projects. In order to show you how some of these tools work, what I'm going to do today is just make a fairly simple project. It's going to be a scaled down table. So it'll have a round base, a cylindrical column and a flat top. So it could be used like a cake stand. So to begin with, what I did was I prepared a piece of wood where I cut a recess of about 60 millimeters in diameter, which I can now place on my Belladonia scroll chuck and open up the jaws in expansion mode to grip that piece of wood in place. As you can see, I'm using recycled material, which is a favorite of mine. To start off with, I'll start making the uh, base. And so I fire up the lathe. And even though I've rough turned it, I still do need to do a little bit of trimming to get the size right and to true it up. Just using the bowl gouge. It'll be a very simple shape that I'm working on. Nothing too fancy, but I do need to get my proportions quite right. So I'm using the gouge almost as a shear scraper. For the next stage of this project, what I need to use is a scraper, which is the tool that's not included in the kit, but I recommend that you uh, add it to your collection of tools. This is just a small half inch uh, scraper and straight out of the packet, so I haven't sharpened it at all, so this is still the factory grind. And what I'll use it for is to clean up the surface of this wood, just in case there are any lumps and bumps that were left by the gouge. The scraper is kept held flat on the tool rest and I like to drag the tool towards me for full control and I should end up with a nice uniform smooth surface that'll just require a little bit of sanding afterwards. I need to create a little hole in here in the center of the piece of wood so that I can then drill a little recess so that I can then attach a pedestal or my central pillar to this piece of wood. So to do that, I'll use the skew. I'll use the long point of the skew. And all that I'm going to do is just create a little hole in the very middle where the drill can then locate so that it will be right in the very center of this piece of wood. So I lay the skew on its side so it's flat and just bring the tip of the tool into the center of the piece of wood and create a little dimple and that's going to be the center for the drill bit to bite into. Since I last spoke to you, I've been over to my drill press and I've drilled a 20 millimeter diameter hole about 10 millimeters deep into the piece of wood. This is where I'm going to locate the spindle part of my project and it's a case of cutting a tenon at the end of the piece of wood that's going to match that hole so that will just simply locate in position. For this part, I've removed the chuck from the, the spindle and put that aside, put my driving spur into the center of the lathe and I need to now bring my tailstock up into position, fit the piece of wood between centers and then I'll be ready to start on the shaping of the spindle. Now, because I'm working on a smaller diameter piece of wood, I now need to use a higher speed. So using the variable speed setting on here, I'll pick up the speed to about 1200 RPM. Ready to move on to the next phase of the project. Safety glass is on, and I'm going to speed, increase the speed of the lathe. So this was about the speed that I was running before when I was doing my base plate part of the project. 
Now I need to increase the speed up to about 1200 RPM and you can tell what speed you're on with this lathe because you've got a little digital readout here that tells you exactly how many revolutions per minute you're running at. Next tool that I need to use is the bowl, uh, no, sorry, the spindle roughing gouge, which is part of the ply tool kit. And I need to just trim this wood down so it's a perfect circle and nice and clean. I need to now create a tenon on the end of this piece of wood and it's going to match the hole that's here and I need to cut it nice and square so that the shoulder will rest on the edge up here without any gaps. To do that, I need to use a parting tool and this is straight out of the kit, straight off the factory grind and I just need to use it to cut down and create that tenon. So again, using the lathe at that higher speed, and I'll use the tool purely as a peeling tool. And then I need to check to see that I've got the right size diameter on this little part here. In the last few moments, I've made another tenon at this end, which is the same process using the parting tool and the vernier calipers to measure. This one's 25 millimeters, and there's a reason why I've gone for the 25, because I'll later need to use that size measurement to hold onto the top part of this piece of work. So all that I need to do now is to begin shaping. I want to refine this shape down and give it a bit more character. So I'll use the roughing gouge again, and I'll get to work. done is I've roughed this down to about the proportions and size that I want the piece to be but I need to now refine it. So for this uh, area here I'll use a skew which is used at a slightly higher tool rest height so raise the tool rest up a bit above centre. The spindle gouge which is the other tool in the kit that I haven't spoken about yet is used but just for detail work and in this case I used it just to roll a half bead at the top here and because I've got a long point on the tool I could actually cut right into this nice neat intersection which I then cleaned up by coming in from the other direction so I've got a nice neat V intersection which gives me detail and it creates a shadow line so that it looks as though they're two separate components that have been fitted together. I could also use the long point of the skew to do the same thing and cut in from one side and in from the other. So I've just spent the last few minutes finishing off this top part which is exactly the same process as I used for the base of this little project. The only difference is that instead of holding it in a large recess as I did here, I used the 25 millimeter hole that this part is going to fit into and I used a pin chuck which is part of the Belladonia range of chucks and jaws and I was simply holding it by that hole, completed the whole thing and now I can just fit it together and there is my little pedestal completed and ready just to have a finish applied to it. Okay to sum up I'll show you what I use the various tools for. This is my standard kit of five as they come and this is the adopted scraper that I recommend you uh, also add to the kit. So to begin with, the roughing gouge was used to trim the spindle down to size and to do the rough shaping. The skew was used to refine the tapered shape and also to cut this incision here to get a nice clean intersection. The spindle gouge was also used to shape this semi-sphere and also to cut this little incision and it was used partly to clean up this little step here. The bulk of that shaping was done with 
the bowl gouge and so is the underneath of the top and the parting tool was used to make the tenons or spigots to allow the whole thing to be assembled. The scraper was used to clean up this top surface and to clean up the underneath and this part here. So there are the six tools, the five in the kit plus the extra one and there's just an example of what you can do with those tools. <laughs> the Crown Tool range is available from Timbercon, either here in Melbourne or in Perth, or online at www.timbercon.com.au.